By the way, someone just asked in, in Twitter, could we say this? Trinity equals mind, Father, body, Christ, Spirit, Holy Ghost, Spirit, one being, three persons. No. <laughs> N-O, unorthodox. Um, the problem is not so much with the word Trinity, it's the concept behind it that is the problem. That concept is not found actually in the Bible. That concept is a way of making sense of two things. One is that the Bible clearly says that there is only one God. Many times in the Old Testament, many times in the New Testament. That, that's the one fact. The other fact is that Christians began to worship Jesus. So now they found themselves with like, two gods. And they know they can't have two gods. So then they started to find a way to explain that this Jesus that they're worshiping is Yahweh himself, or somehow Yahweh. And so the idea of the Trinity came to be developed over time. It is a patchwork, joining two things which cannot really be joined. And the seams are always showing, because as James White said in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, it is easy to fall into a heresy when you, when you think about the Trinity. If you think, as some Christians may say, that God is like we might be a father and a son and a husband at the same time, he said this is modalism. That's a heresy. So either you err on the side of modalism or you err on the side of tritheism, where you think of the God of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as being so distinct from each other that really they become three gods in, in your mind. So either you err this way or you err the other way. When it comes to thinking about Jesus, Christians are required to think that Jesus is fully God and fully man at the same time in such a way that everything he does is God, by God and man both doing it at the same time. So then we ask, okay, so he died on the cross. That means God died. Then a Christian thinks about it and says, no, God doesn't die. Now you're separating the two, which you're not supposed to do. So this is another heresy. And according to E.P. Sanders in his book, Paul, uh, Christians in practice almost have to uh, decide which heresy they're going to commit because it, it, you have to walk such a sharp edge, you're going to fall on one side or, or the other. In fact, uh, I, I respect that Christians are struggling to understand this uh, uh, feature of their faith. And, and it is a difficult feature. And, and it's not the average Christian who has invented this, so it's not their fault. And uh, uh, Christians... Uh, uh, do not understand this even at the highest uh, levels. Uh, I showed you a book written by four scholars, and one of them responding to the writing of the other, Paul Molnar re responding to Thomas McCall's article, keeps saying, oh, this, this smells like the Trinity, the, uh, like the tritheism. That smells like, that sounds like tritheism. This smacks of tritheism. So one Christian scholar is, is, is saying that the other scholar's explanation of the Trinity seems to amount to tritheism, which means three gods, and that's a heresy it's unacceptable to Christians. So it's not the average Christian alone who is struggling to understand this. Even Christians who have thought about this a lot and wrote about this a lot, who, Christians who are representative uh, of the faith, it is a deep problem. So how do you reconcile that with the Trinity? You have no way of knowing from the Bible itself that there are only three divine persons. There could be other divine persons. If you open that up, there is no closing it. So the Muslim belief that there is only one God is a sensible approach to, to the Bible.